This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at a free update to the Gridify UV tools. Edge selection is no longer required. Texel density can be set locally, and I've fixed a bunch of bugs, so let's check it out. If you've purchased these scripts from my store, the icons look like this. Here's the grid UV, and here is the rec UV. You can also find these tools inside the UV mapping toolbox. So if you click this icon and you come down here, you see you've got grid UVs here and you've also got rec UVs here as well. Grid UV maps selected faces into a grid of uniform squares. And rec UV does the same thing, but it creates non-uniform rectangles based on the shape of each face. So the resulting UVs have the correct aspect ratio and don't look stretched in one direction. Rec UV is usually what you want, but it has some limitations that grid UV doesn't. So sometimes using grid UV and manually unfolding can be what you want. Or if you actually want a uniform grid of UVs, then use grid UV. Okay, so the first new feature is highly requested. In the previous version of the tools, you would first need to select a border edge, and then you would right click and you would say, go to multi mode, and then you'd shift and click to get the faces and the edges selected at the same time. And then you would run the tool and it would do its thing and it would give you the nice grid or whatever, and it would put the seam along the edges that you had selected and it would apply the gridification. And the reason that we had to do that is because this is a cylindrical shaped object, meaning that if you select all the faces, there's no natural border edge. These edges are shared and there was no way for it to cut. So you would define the cutting if you wanted to do cylindrical shapes. And it was requested that if we could just have it auto seam, so this new feature should help a lot with that. So here, let's just mess up the UVs. In fact, we can delete a bunch of the UVs just to show that the thing is actually working. And so now I'm gonna select nothing except faces. That's all I've got selected. And I'm gonna click Rec UV and boom, you're gonna get it. It's gonna seam it and it's just gonna magically choose a seam. Now, if you don't like where the seam goes, you can still do a manual seam. So if we wanna move the seam, let's say like here instead of there, I'm gonna go to edge mode. Double click to get the edge, right click multi, hold shift, double click to get all the faces. And then if I run the tool again, you're going to see that border edge is moved. If I just do it with face mode, it's going to randomly choose the border edge based on Maya's internal algorithm or whatever that tool is. So click it. So I actually find this significantly faster to just auto seam. And then if I don't like where the seam is, I'll just move it manually. Like you can just, you know, do a cut like that and move it later. This is a huge time improvement. And it also just makes the tool so much easier to use because you're just selecting faces. And then that also works in the grid UV tool. It's also been updated. So if we just select the faces we wanna map and click grid, same thing, gives you the auto seam. Click a second time to rotate if the grid of UVs is not in the direction that you wanted. Okay, now I've uh, imported this different mesh that has this big flare out at the bottom. I want to show you an error that you may encounter. So I'm going to select all the faces on this and I'm going to click Rec UV so it goes through and does it. And it's going to give me a garbled mess. And if I click again, it's still going to give me a garbled mess. So unlike Grid UV, Rec UV requires your face selection to be a strip of faces, a square of faces, or a rectangle of faces, meaning like this selection is good, this selection is good, or this selection is good. These will all work, but if you do a jagged selection, so something like this, like or a stair step selection like this, or anything like this, it won't work. That's the limitation. So that's the one thing that the tool can't do is it needs to have a square or a rectangle in order for the tool to work. And the reason that this failed is because the auto seam didn't find a square to work on. And the way that we can test that is the grid UV, which is a lot more robust, but it unfortunately doesn't do the UV aspect ratio. So we're going to click this and it's going to do the auto seaming. And you're going to see, oh, okay, that's why, because the auto seam didn't know what to do here. It didn't choose the seam that we thought it would, which would run down this edge. Instead, it did a hard right here and then went down there. And because Rec UV requires a square or a rectangle, this isn't a square or rectangle, it's stair step. But we can fix this manually. We can go to edge mode and do it the old way. We can double click the edge and right click, 
go to multi shift and then double click to get the faces plus the edges and now that we've defined the border edge all the way down click it and boom there you go so just something to be aware of if you run this tool and you get some wonky result you should first try running this tool and see what you get Next up, I fixed a very annoying limitation of the Rec UV tool. In the past, if you had a face selection like this and you wanted to do Rec UV on that, you would have to set the seam and the seam would have to be the same height as the face selection. And what I mean by that is that you would have to select only these as the border edge. If you just double click, which is what you want to do, and it grabbed all the edges and then you went to multi mode and selected these faces and ran the tool, it would fail because this edge extension goes higher than the face selection. So I fixed that. So now this selection will work, which is really nice. This saves a lot of time. So if you're doing a custom seam and only UV mapping a part of the mesh, you can click this and it will work. So in the past, that would not work. It would actually fail. So if you wanted to do something like this, you could just grab the faces up there and then expand the selection. And now it would be really tricky and very annoying to go into multi-mode and like get the edge loop. It's hard to see what's selected too because they're both the same color. So now you could do something like this. Select the faces that you want and double click the edge and just let the whole edge loop go all the way to the top and then click the button and it works. So that's a huge improvement too, if you're using custom seam. But uh, most of the time I don't even use the custom seam anymore anyway. Make those wonky so we can see what's happening. I would just grab the faces, click the button and let it do the auto seam. So save even more time that way. Super cool. Okay, and next up I have a bug fix, which was a really bad bug. And it was causing the tool to fail a lot of the time when it shouldn't. And I'm going to demonstrate it on this little oil tank that my wife modeled. So. If you selected something like this, that was like a 2D cylinder and it wrapped back on itself, the tool would often fail and it should have never done that, but I had a bug in there. And so I found the bug and I fixed it. So let's select this, we'll do this part as well. We can't do that part because it has some tries in it and the tool doesn't work on tries, but we can do the quads. So now if we select that and we click the Rec UV, we get that. And that is what we would expect to get. And in previous versions of the tool, that would just be a jumbled mess. In fact, we can do that all over this mesh. We can just click the button and let it auto seam and we get that. And then we could probably even do part of this, let's say. And I'll just expand one and we can click that. Rec UV and we get that. And then let's just do one more thing down here for fun. We'll do this cylinder and we'll click that and we get that. And so you may have noticed as I was doing these gridifications, they're all coming out to be relative texel density to one another. And the reason for that is because I've added a new feature which hard codes the texel density for these tools. And I'm going to show you how you can modify the script locally if you want to set your own texel density. I have the texel density hard coded to this for 5.12 pixels per unit, which is the default that I like to use. But if you want to change that, you can modify it locally to be whatever you want. To modify that, go up to either one of the buttons. Texel density is supported in both. And right click and say edit. You will see this number here. And there's some help text here. It says change picks per unit to whatever texel density you want the resulting grid of UVs to be hard coded to. So like I said, I have it set to 5.12 pixels per unit. So let's set that to 2.12. And then I'll redo the tool here and I'll click Rec UV and you'll see it's much smaller now because I've changed the text density. So you can force that to be whatever you want. So you can see that one's a lot smaller and that one's going to be like micro scale. Yeah, so you can go in here and change that to be whatever you want. I'm just going to set it back to the default for myself. And you will notice that the tool actually runs a bit slower and that's because I've edited it. One thing that I've learned about Maya is if you edit a shelf button, the code that runs in it thereafter runs super slow until you restart Maya. So if you find you've edited these and you're like, oh man, it's laggy now, just restart Maya and you'll get all the speed back.
And then I also wanted to show in the actual UV mapping toolbox, if you open that up and we've got the grid UVs and rec UVs tool there, that texel density is actually dynamically controlled by the tool. So you don't have to hard code anything. If you prefer using those scripts inside of this toolbox, which I do, you can actually change this pix per unit and it will read that into these tools. So we've got it set to 5.12. And if we click rec UVs, whatever, it does that. And then if we change that here to two and then go again, you will see it does that. So you can actually set this to whatever you want and then the gridification will uh, work there. Okay, and finally, I would like to show some secret settings about the Rec UV tool that Omar asked me to add in. So first, I'm just gonna delete all of the UVs off of this just so they don't get in the way. And then I'm just going to select these faces so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to do Rec UV on those. And boom, there we go. I should also mention, if you don't have any UVs on your object, the shell gets created at zero. But if you do have UVs on the object, so whatever, like this, the shell will get recreated wherever the pivot is of your selection. So when you select the faces, it's going to try to not move the shell. So if we go again, see it stays there which is super handy if you're working on an existing shell. But if you have nothing, then it, it generates it down here because that's where the pivot is. When you have no UVs, the pivot is down there. So Omar works with a lot of existing shells. A lot of people like to do some mapping on the model first. They might do a camera map or whatever, planar map or something. They might start with something like this and they're happy with the texel density. Maybe they're working in a scale this big and then that's like what they like to do. And when you use Rack UV, because the texel density is now hard coded, it puts it into the texel density and shrinks it. So I'm just going to undo that. So Omar wanted a switch in the script where he could say, keep the existing texel density of my current shell. So if you right click this and say edit, and then you go to this setting here, again, there's some help text. Uh, so it says set to one if you want the resulting grid of UVs to keep texel density from the existing UV shell before gridification and ignore the hard coded value. So I'm going to set that to one and I'm going to close this and then I'm going to run the tool again. And you're going to see, see it kept the much bigger texel density instead of scaling it down. So that could be useful if you want that for your project. He also wanted a setting to always normalize the resulting UV shell. So always like scale it down into zero to one every time, no matter what. So again, if we go edit here and set this to one, this kind of overrides the top one, right? So if you set that to one, it remembers the texel density from the existing shell. You set this to one, it always normalizes the result. So we'll set that to one and we'll select the faces and we'll click again. And see, now it always puts it into the zero to one, no matter what you do. So depending on your workflow, that might be something that you want as well. You could always duplicate this button three or four times and have all the four different settings there and use them in conjunction with one another. So if we click this now, see, no matter what doesn't give you a texel density per se, it just gives you a zero to one mapping. So same thing if we do this down here, even though that's tiny, it's going to stretch it to fit zero to one. So just another secret feature that could help you out. And I just want to show one more thing that is pretty neat. And then I'm going to right click edit this one more time. And we're going to go back and we're going to turn off the normalize because I don't want it to go zero to one. I want to leave this on though, the keep existing texel density. And I'm going to show you a neat trick. When it's set into this mode, you can use it as an unfolding tool, which is significantly better than Maya's default unfolding tool. Unfolding and straightening us in Maya would be really time consuming and like very difficult, actually. So I'm going to select the UVs and I'm going to open up the UV toolkit and I'm going to use the standard workflow of doing an unfold. And then from there, we would try to do a straighten UVs. And you're going to see it can't really straighten those. It collapses back on itself. And the reason for that is because it uses an angle threshold. It uses 30 or whatever. You can change this and, and maybe you can get better results, but you'll always run into a limitation based on the shape of your mesh. And it's very slow on high poly meshes. And so it's annoying because you really just want to unfold this. Like maybe we could try doing the middle edge. I've had some luck doing this. 
straighten shell. Yeah, see, it's still like super jank. And then if you run a straighten on that, it's, you're not going to get anything good. So the cool thing is, if we were to set my tool into the mode that Omar likes, which is the keep existing shell texel density, we can kind of use this as an unfolding tool. So if you've already kind of mapped this into the rough shape that you want, I'm just going to undo back to that. Even though it wraps back on itself and all this stuff was within the tolerance or whatever, watch what happens when we run our tool on it. So I'm going to select all the faces and I'm going to click the rec UV. And boom, you get a nice, perfectly unfolded, straightened, gridified, rectangularized shell and nothing ever has the chance of looping back onto itself. So, and it's really robust too. If we wanted to just do a section of it, that would work. Like this will always just work. So let's say we just want to do that part, click it, and it's just going to make a nice, perfect straight for you. The limitation of this, as I said before, is it only works on quads. So the one advantage that the Maya tool has over this is that it will work on tries, but it won't work 99% of the time. So I don't know if that's a great advantage anyways. And then, so we could do a middle section of this too. As long as we don't have a jaggy selection, we could do this, which is cool. Just straighten that middle section and then straighten this. And there you go. So I think that is really neat. If you would like to use this as an unfolding tool, then you can just make a duplicate of that button and set that one feature to on. So I think that's a neat suggestion from Omar. I hope that everyone enjoys these updates. I think both of these tools have gotten a lot better now that we have the auto edge, auto seam thing where you can just select faces and go about your day. And I think it's also going to make this tool significantly easier for people to learn and get good results, even though they're just starting to understand what the tool does. If you've already purchased the Mega Script Pack, the UV Mapping Pack, or the Single Script, this will be a free update, so you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff. If you haven't purchased the script yet, you can grab the script by itself in the UV Mapping Pack, or you can get it in the Mega Script Pack, so take your pick. Thanks very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you liked this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a fantastic day.